Today at Blade HQ, I am at ProTech with the illustrious Dave Wattenberg, and I got a little, uh, an email from a, from a guy you might know. What is up, guys? Today at Blade HQ, I am at ProTech with the illustrious Dave Wattenberg. Dave, how are you, sir? Great. Good to see you, Ben. Thanks for having us. And My thanks pleasure. for hosting a knife banter in your shop, your front shop. It's our first time. Which is pretty amazing. Yeah. Do they hand out little commemorative coins for this? We'll have to make one. Maybe a laser engraved knife. <laughs> oh, I like that. Yeah. I like that. Okay, so we also have a special treat today. We uh, happen to be in California, and I got a little uh, an email from uh, from a guy you might know. You might you might have heard of him. Is it, did I do that right? More or less. Yeah, I think <laughs> you, you pretty much nailed it. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Nick here. Hey, everybody. Nick here. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Let me introduce the back of Nick Shabazz to you. <laughs> hey, everybody, Nicky. <laughs> so I wanted to do a video with Nick for a long time, and uh, one of his stipulations, you don't show your face on camera. Generally, no, no. Which is fantastic. Yeah. So we have accommodated that. I and, appreciate uh, that. We're going to talk today about automatic knives. And I don't think there's a better place in the world to talk about automatic knives oh, than right point. here on Protex hallowed ground. Um, so... As we get into it, a few points for you guys at home that we want to talk about, why automatic knives? And why would you want to carry one? Why would you want to buy one? Why would you want to own one? Um, and so we're going to dive into that topic. And can we start with you, Dave, just kind of not too deep into your history, but why automatic knives for you? You know, I, uh, I grew up in the cutlery business. My dad and my uncle at a retail cutlery shop. And as a kid, there was this like forbidden area in the store with these <laughs> vintage American and Italian auto knives. And I was just always drawn to it, you know. And when I did get the chance to see one someplace and play with it, I always enjoyed it so much. And, you know, there's thankfully the, the knife business and knife making has evolved to such an incredible place where we get to make things so far beyond what we need that we get to make <laughs> what we enjoy and what we love. And the customers get to choose things that they enjoy and love. And uh, for us here at ProTech, autos are pretty high up there. So let's let's I've take noticed. <laughs> yeah, let's take that idea. Is there something in your line that is so far beyond utilitarian that you've got on the table? Absolutely. So um, let's this, just start with the, the good stuff here. Yeah, let's start all the way up. So Holy this is crap. a <laughs> <laughs> this is an ultimate custom Newport. And this particular knife is a titanium frame that's been all hand sat and finished. Can touch it? Absolutely. I can see his, oh, hand, his hands are yeah, over there. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> and so this one's got a lot going on. We've got uh, black lip mother pearl, a matching black lip pearl push button, this incredible Chad Nichols mosaic Damascus, hand engraved by Bruce Shaw. And then this one's got uh, one of our new generation all 3D titanium pocket clips, oh. it, starting with a solid bar of titanium. That one is not bent. It's machined yeah, completely like that. You can see like the that. thickness difference there. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. It's amazing. So this is kind of like the ultimate beyond the pale this for is, automatic. I mean, yeah. it's, it's beautiful. What about utilitarian? Take us to the opposite end of this. So thing. one of the neat things about the ProTech line is that we'll take a given model, in fact, almost all of our models, and we'll build it from a knife you can buy at Blade HQ for 150, 160 bucks, all the way up to the 15, 1600 dollar one and way beyond that. So this is a solid aluminum frame with a real nice Ben Blue anodize, a stone wash. Patent pending. Patent pending. Can you say all Ben right, Blue pending? Patent pending. <laughs> uh, with a S35 stone wash blade, great steel, durable user finish deep carry pocket clip, and this aluminum version, it's just about two ounces. So nice. it's slender and yeah. light. It's a great knife to carry and use. A lot of guys and, and gals, for that matter, who are wearing a little nicer trouser, maybe not a jean, yeah. they love this deep carry clip. It's a nice light carry. Um, and so literally from 150 up to, say, 1600, up from there, in between, uh, we like to build a wide range of auto knives. Nice. Okay, Nick. So I, I want to, I want to ask you a question. I've watched some of your stuff. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. I feel the same way about my stuff. So. Well, you know, what no one's saying. Yeah. Uh, where do you get off? Where do you land on autos as your personal preferences? So personally, you know, I, at this point in time, and not for review, I own exactly one automatic knife, and that's this guy, the uh, Protex Sprint here. 
this is just a really nice little piece. It's California legal now that I live here. And it's lightweight, it's small, it's not, it's small enough that it's not going to terrify people, which is a thing with autos, as you well know. Um, you know, the oh my god, think of the children effect is small here. And, you know, generally, but honestly, this is the only auto I really feel like I need. I don't want to hear magics if that was still legal here. Mm -hmm. But uh, aside from that, you know, they're not something that really appeals to me because if you get, you know, a nice fast flipper knife, you know, bam, how much faster was that really than, or slower was that really than, you know, using a, an actual button lock auto? And so, it, you know, given all the legal complications and whatnot, it's never really super appealed to me to go, you know, oh my god, automatic switchblade. Um, so, you know, that's always been my position, but I can see some reasons, certainly. And see, I, for me personally, too, I, I got kids. And in fact, Dave, I got to tell you a story. I've got this Whiskers. Yep. <laughs> and uh, I took it camping with us. We were working on a project with it. And I hand it to my wife, and she opens it. And it nearly jumps out of her hands. Yeah. <laughs> she, every time, she'd be like, ah, ah. <laughs> Because your, your knives, in fact, will you hand me that Whiskers just for emphasis here? Your knives are snappy. Oh, yeah. I mean, they just, it, they pop open oh yeah and that's kind of your signature absolutely and i think that's the reason to love them yeah and i think that's the reason my wife is like no this is <laughs> not for me but i think there's something to be said in this market about separating your people yeah you cater to auto, auto people yeah. we do and they're if somebody wants an auto in fact people walk in our store all the time and they say i want an automatic knife and Melinda up front, she says, well, have you heard of Protect? I love Melinda. Yeah. <laughs> and, and she's awesome. But the, the thing is, if you want an automatic knife, you should get a Protect. Because it's, I think it is the, the apex of what is out there. Um, so in, in you. Europe, no, it, it's true. Um, I actually agree with that, yeah. It, but at the same time, convince me, Dave, because I, I kind of fall in that camp of like, I've been carrying this Calmigo for three weeks now. Which, by the way, I, we've been at the shop for three days. One of Dave's guys, Daniel, stuck a mother of pearl button in there for me. Ooh. And so uh, this was going to be a knife that Ben didn't steal. <laughs> <laughs> that ship has sailed. Yes. So. Uh, Yoink. Yes. <laughs> anyway, um, so I've been carrying this one, and I actually I love the size. It, it fits all of my qualifications. Ben Blue um, size is right there. It's the and big I, one. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny because I actually with this particular knife I have kind of been finding out what is my sweet spot as far as length mm -hmm. yeah. because I kind of had the the long but not the short and I figured yeah. I, what I realized is it doesn't matter how short it is it, it will do the job. Um, and the other thing I realized is I've always struggled closing autos one-handed and that's one thing I was like yeah I, I don't love that yeah. but after carrying this for a few weeks you get used to it. Yeah. yeah. And so for me, I think it's, it's more of an issue of if I'm in public and I snap that open, it's looks. Right. Yeah. And that's, uh, I'm kind of, I'm not as low-key as Nick here. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I kind of like the, I like yeah, to run yeah. low-key, you know? Because if I, if I snap this open in church. Oh, are you insane? Yeah, that can get a little bit tricky. So. The, old, the old ladies are going to look well, around. And, and let's face it, if you know, if you're out on the soccer field and someone needs to cut, you know, a, a thread off of a net, <laughs> if you if you use this Godfather tuxedo to do it, you'll clear the field. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, and, and <laughs> <laughs> the, have you ever done that? Dave? You got kids, so have yeah, you ever... not with a Godfather, okay. no. But I, I will use a sprint or something yeah. like that. Absolutely, yeah, I and, love it. And so you know, with the level of knife making. And all the different choices that are out on the market. And there's so much amazing stuff. There is. You know, there really are. And everyone's able to pick for themselves all these different mechanisms, all these different materials, different makers, and all the rest of it. And the autos are difficult to make. Yeah. They're very finicky to manufacture. And we've developed our own system, our own process for doing it that's really quite good. And for folks that are interested in automatic knives, they enjoy the snap, they enjoy the mechanics. And you know, it's it's incredible. You'll get an automatic knife in someone's hand and you know, they press that button. And when it opens with that crisp, authoritative <laughs> snap, there's a there's an emotional response oh, attached absolutely. to it. And I'll tell you what, um, it's part of what we do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, is to do it well enough that when that snaps open, it kind of makes you happy. 
<laughs> and on top of it, you've got a well-built American-made product with a lifetime warranty and all the other things that go into it. And we've realized, you know, there are some folks who aren't interested in a spring. Oh, yeah. And so we've ventured into, you know, the, the yeah. uh, flippers and even a spring assist model mm -hmm. and some other different things that we do. So if you like our quality, if you like our designs, but the spring doesn't do it for you, we've got some other options too. Which I think is really cool. It's, it's interesting you talk about that emotional response. And I, I, let's be honest, I think for a lot of folks, owning a pocket knife is this, it's an emotional <laughs> It's thing. a journey. <laughs> it's a journey, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, we were, we just, we went to lunch. I got to go to yeah. lunch with Nick Shabazz. I, Not as cool as it sounds. He, uh, <laughs> he sat on the other side of the table with his back turned to us. And a Batman mask, you know, just in case. Yeah. But uh, we were just talking about how, how did he get into knives and, and just that whole journey. And yeah. it is, it yeah, really I mean, is. He's got one. Yep, it's, it's a fascinating yeah. thing to see. And we've talked about this, Dave, too. Knives become part of what you're doing in your everyday life, and I think you, you kind of inject a piece of yourself into the tool. Absolutely. And I think as a tool maker, you're doing the same thing as you make it. And it becomes not only yours, but it becomes yours as yeah. well. So, Dave, what else have you got on the table there? So, uh, this is one of our newer tactical response series, and this is the TR5. And we were talking at lunch a little hey. bit about kind of the evolution of things as we build them. And if you look through some of our models, you say through the TR series, the tactical response, this is one of the newest generations. And so it has some refinements to it. As we've gone along these 19 years, we try continually to improve the knives. What can we do design-wise? Materials, elements, you know, every chance we get, we try to make them better. And so this has a lot of features. It's, it's actually one of, it's really one of the best knives we've ever built. You have my curiosity, but now you have my attention. And it's, it's a very nice size, kind of a medium size. It's got the slide safety, S35. This piece here, uh, Nick, we, we were able to walk through the shop for a couple of minutes, and he was able to see some of the processes, eight different steps involved, just in making this one little hardened glass piece, you know, at the back end of a knife, yeah. let alone the handle and the blade and all the other components. Deep carry pocket clip, um, really a great all-around knife. I don't yeah. think you've had a chance to play with a TR5. I, not really, no. It? These are absolutely really cool. Oh, S35, nice. So I think this is another element of automatic knives that we we got to be cognizant of, is there are a lot of first responders. There's yes. a lot of military yeah. folks, law enforcement folks that want and need an automatic knife. Why, why is an automatic better for some of those professions? I'm not open to the table. You make them. <laughs> Absolutely. So these men and women that do those type of jobs, you know, they need tools that work for them. And we're always amazed and humbled when the elite, you know, best of the best Navy SEALs and Secret Service and even local law enforcement friends of ours, when they make the choice to buy and carry a ProTech knife, it means the world to us. And we're absolutely dedicated to making sure they have the best tool for the job. And most of the time, a pocket knife for somebody like that, it's a secondary third backup. It's a safety tool. It's a rescue tool. You know, there's so many different possible uses for it. And it's amazing, as we all know, you know, uh, sitting here and probably most of the people watching a video like this, if you're used to carrying a knife and it becomes yeah. part of your personal effects, part mm -hmm. of, yeah. like you said, you know, part of your daily carry for a professional person, a law enforcement yeah. or military person, it's a whole nother level. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's not just something they've chosen out of emotion. They need it and they need it to work and they need the best tool they can get. And uh, we're proud to provide it. That's cool. Well, and actually that hits on our, an important point is that one advantage that an auto has is that it's always going to fire. When you have a spring that's this damn strong in this guy, it will fire 100%. Of, you were just showing me, if you don't mind, somebody's got in a house fire. Like yep. the, the house caught fire and the knife still deploys. Yeah, the house burned to the ground. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, right there, that is an element of, you know, a very finicky bearing-based flip a knife is not always... You can be, you know, deep in the stuff, if you will, and you're still probably yeah. going to have this guy fire, whereas something might, else might not. So that's definitely one point in the pro yeah. auto category. No, that was one thing I noticed. I, I used this on my sprinkler system. I'm out there cutting pipe. I got it all sorts of dirty. I had to bring it into the warranty department. I had some fun with that. <laughs> but that was the other thing is even though it's got dirt and muck in there, it still fires. Oh, yeah. Here's a good example. This one is a, a TR2 in a full 
full stainless steel frame, 416. <laughs> it's got a black lip pearl push button. Give that one a go, Nick. Yeah, this one fires like, holy crap, <laughs> that sound. Yeah. We were talking about this it's sound, like but holy crap, rocking, that yeah. sound. <laughs> holy it, cow. One way I like to judge autos is, uh, is by the, uh, I call it the arm jiggle factor. <laughs> so watch, watch the arm here. <laughs> does, it, does it jiggle the you arm? You don't have or any not? jiggle. Yeah. Yeah, like, Come on. <laughs> does, does it jiggle the arm or not? You know? And yours always they're Absolutely. great arm jigglers. Yep. <laughs> Plus three arm, arm jiggle points. Is that on the plate HQ one of the specs? Arm jiggle factor two out of five? No? Some kind of a needle. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's just an arm. They're just the reading is off the chart. But oh. I, there's there's an interesting thing here too. Some autos you can uh, you can pull the button back yeah. and let it go and it will it will stop. Yeah. Yours don't stop. I mean, it can, even just taking that, just a hair, yeah. your spring takes it all the way to open. The every spring, time. the tolerances, the time spent obsessing about all these tolerances and quality issues, and it's not an inexpensive way to manufacture something, yeah. that's for sure, uh, but the result is exactly, like you said, you get something where the snap is unique and Excellent, yeah, uh, yeah. and that's what we go for. This one's this one's kind of neat. You know, we try to offer a variety of different surface finishes. This is actually print anodized um, with a kind of a vintage huh. flag motif. It's an incredible process uh, done by Peter Kellett, a friend of ours. Nice. That one's got a gold lip pearl push button and then a hand ground blade, wow. uh, hand ground by Mike Geary, custom knife maker, friend of ours. And so across the ProTech line, again, you know, from your basic all black duty knife that's really well suited to law enforcement and military, something a little more interesting with different colors, different yeah. textures, all the way up to the investor collector category. Sure. And this is a beautiful piece. Investor collector, I like that. I'm gonna start calling myself that. <laughs> <laughs> just so I feel better. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm, I'm not obsessed with knives, I'm an investor collector. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. You're, oh, a man. You're a bad enabler, Dave. financially <laughs> prudent. <laughs> Sign me up for one of those. <laughs> Screw stocks. <laughs> That's the collector. I love it. I love it. That's a beautiful piece. I like yeah, that one. Okay, what else is, so we looked at the Cambria, we looked at the... And then the, just a, another flavor of the Sprint. I know awesome. it's a, a favorite knife of Nick's, and we just finished this group with this special gray anodized carbon fiber. Uh, you know, we're always trying to come up with something a little different, and a lot of times nice. we'll run, you know, mainly black, and then we'll mix in some colors just, you know, for kicks. And so this yeah. is a limited group. I think we only made about 60 of them. Nice. Um, and so kind of a non-catalog thing. And if you look at Blade HQ or your favorite knife dealer... And Blade you, HQ. Exactly. Same thing. If, if, <laughs> if you're <laughs> subtle plug there, people. <laughs> you'll always notice if you're looking for something new, something different, that there'll be a pro tech for you sure. to see. Oh, absolutely. Well, and I, I think they've. Were you? You're kind of here in this this Cali market. I think that's an important thing to notice too. Is you you built the you wrote the book on making a knife that coincides with local laws, yeah. which yeah. is pretty fantastic. I, yeah. I look at these two as great examples, the Runt as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you wrote Where the, it kind of all started. Yeah. yeah, you wrote the book on it. And I think whether or not somebody wants or loves autos or not, you've made them available. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think even just by making them available, people are gonna carry them. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think in a lot of ways, people like me, that have never carried an auto when they start carrying one it's like hmm, okay yeah. it's a little something there yeah <laughs> not a little something i mean yeah. it's it's that satisfying snap it absolutely is, it's almost i don't know don't know how to describe that but it's satisfying yeah and the thing i like a lot about what you guys are doing is you're doing the out the sides which have the big advantage that let's say you are in church and for some reason need your knife um you can always put your finger right here and kind of catch the blade yeah was it a slip joint? Was it grandpa's knife? I don't know. But it's a good way to calm the fear. And that's one thing I've always appreciated about the side fire is relative to some of the other approaches. That's, that's, that's a plus. If you need discretion, you can. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. it's available. It can, can look just like a can fancy. I, can I get some discretion out of it? <laughs> <laughs> maybe not the, maybe not the godfather. Let me, let me fix your child. Yeah, that. yeah exactly. <laughs> if you, you can discreetly take the blade out, but it's still. I love it. It will discreetly dive for under the bleachers. <laughs> yeah. 
Nick, do you have any other thoughts, comments on autos? One big thing that I like about autos is that they, there's an accessibility level to them as well. Definitely. Perhaps somebody who doesn't have fine motor skills or is struggling with, you know, for something like that, it's very often easy to press a button and then, you know, you can use two hands to shut it afterwards. That's a big advantage for a lot of people. Or, frankly, even if you've got 15 other things in your hand and you're not necessarily like, I can open an automatic life with my, or a, a knife with my left hand. That's amazing. I can do nothing with this hand. But then... <laughs> I can do that, and so that is a big advantage uh, that I think is a win for autos that isn't in a lot of other categories. Nice. Yeah. Accessibility. So, and of course, you've always got the option to uh, do a wheel, <laughs> especially if you open it with the right directions. <laughs> you guys, I'm not a brilliant man. Holy crap. <laughs> you can tell. Like I said, left hand does nothing. But either way, you can do a wheel, and it's way cooler when that, that works well. That would have been so cool. It would have been so cool, but then I'm an idiot. So... You don't That's sell awesome. automatic knives to Nick Shabazz people. It's just going to go poorly. That's awesome. <laughs> Guys, tell us down in the comments, why do you carry an automatic knife? We'd love to hear your conversation. This is Knife Bander, and we'd love to hear kind of what you have to say about autos. Dave, where can they find you on the internet? Uh, ProTechKnife.com, and certainly when you're ready to buy, BladeHQ.com. Sure. And on Instagram, you guys are ProTech Knives. We are. Right. And Nick, where can they find you on the internet? Uh, YouTube.com slash Nick Shabazz, Nick Shabazz.com, which just sends you there, and then Instagram, Nick Shabazz. Awesome. Awesome. Nick, Dave, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Good fun. For... Thank you so much. No, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just glad I'm not going to myself. <laughs> Guys, we'll have another video coming out for you next week. It probably won't have as many uh, backs facing the camera, <laughs> but uh, we're stoked you're here. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. Go check out Nick's channel. I'm going to publicly endorse it. I watch Nick Shabazz. No, I'm serious. <laughs> okay, you're no. lost. <laughs> <laughs> I, I watch Nick Shabazz to get new ideas and to understand what people are, are thinking, and I think that's huge. You, what you're, is he thinking? No, I, I think it's a great voice in the community. I appreciate it. So go check out Nick Shabazz's channel. Yep. He does a great job, and thank you for watching. I never said thank you. And you'll never have to.